we are in sunny Long Beach, California, which is a lot warmer than New York State. No puffy coats. No. You see this? This is an actual sweater exactly. with no coat. I am also still wearing the same outfit that I wore at this talk we did at 368. A lot of people wonder what the difference is between a crop body and a full frame. And when is the right time to switch to full frame? What are the differences? Does it actually make your footage look different? We're going to tell you the difference between a crop body and a full frame camera and if it's right for you. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Look at this place. This is lovely, Hank. This video is gonna be not like our normal tutorials. This is actually gonna be more of like a vlog tutorial vlog scenario. Tutorial. So you're probably wondering, why are we in Long Beach when we were just in New York City? I thought I was gonna stop if I waited. I don't think that's stopping. We've escaped the jackhammers and we traded it for some soothing waterfall sounds. Cute and new music. Sony invited us out to check out one of their new cameras. Uh, it's the A6400, I think. And it happens to be a crop body, so we were gonna do this video, crop body versus full frame, and what better time to do it than now. So we're gonna do a kind of a, not a head-to-head -head comparison, but we're just gonna explain what a crop body is and how it compares to a full frame, and if it's something that you want in your kit. Because a lot of people wonder, you know, is like, do I need a full frame to be professional? Do I have to have a full frame to get good results? We'll lay it all out and you guys can make those decisions, but mm -hmm. our job is just to show you some direct comparisons. And also keep in mind too that you'll be able to see the differences when you have an A-B comparison. But if you don't have the other to compare it to and you're only watching a video only on a crop body, I have a feeling that you probably won't really notice the difference that much. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna actually cut to our office where we're gonna give you an in-depth explanation of what uh, a full frame versus a crop body means and what this whole confusing crop factor is all about. So mm -hmm. we're gonna go cut there right now. So what is a full frame camera? That just means that the sensor size is the same size as an old school piece of 35 millimeter film. In comparison, crop bodies have a smaller sensor size. And the reason this is, is because when digital became popular, it was easier and cheaper to make smaller sensors. So regardless of what lens you use on a full frame versus a crop body, the lens stays the same. A 70 millimeter lens on a crop body is still still technically a 70 millimeter lens on a full frame. The focal length of a lens is a physical property that does not change. So you've probably heard of a crop factor and we'll talk about this later, but let's just picture a 70 millimeter lens and this is just projecting an image on a sensor. If we remove the lens from the camera, we can actually project a lens of our computer monitor directly on the sheet of paper. This is all a lens does. It just focuses light and projects an image. So the projected image is just a circle. What your camera sensor does is creates a cutout of that in roughly a rectangular shape. This rectangle here represents the size of a full frame sensor. A crop body sensor might be something like this size. And hopefully just click for you that a crop body is doing exactly like it sounds. It's just, just cropping your image. So it appears that the image is zoomed in with a crop body compared to a full frame camera. However, zooming in is a bit of a misnomer because it's not actually zooming in because the lens focal length didn't change. So where does the term crop factor come into play? If you took a Sony a6400 that has a 1.5 times crop factor and you threw a 70 millimeter lens on it, it's gonna appear more zoomed in even though you're not actually zoomed because the focal length is still 70 millimeters, but it's gonna look equivalent to what a 105 millimeter lens would look like on a full frame when it comes to comparing field of view. So I hope that explains things and clarifies things a bit. Just remember that the focal length of the lens stays constant regardless of the camera you use. It's just that the field of view changes because you're cropping in or out. We'll see you back in California. Okay, and we're back from the office. We're you guys are pros when it comes to full frame and crop bodies, That's right? That's right, yeah. The sun is gonna be killing my exposure right now. Going How's it going, nice man? Nice to see ya. Boom. Double vlogging. <laughs> Double, Double vlog. vlog inception. <laughs> There's gonna probably be a lot of this going yeah. on today. This is Brett. Check out his channel, link up here. Or link down below, link somewhere. Fellow New Yorker. We're like Canadians fronting as New Yorkers. It's a cute little setup. Phone check. We have the flip up screen. So we had to put the microphone on a bracket, which kind of changes the form factor a bit. It kind of makes it sit a taller, wider. So, so the autofocus is supposed to be a lot better on this camera. Does it still track you when it's backlit? Yeah, it does. Damn. I want that autofocus on this camera. This is going to be such a hassle to edit later. <laughs> So we're about to get on this boat. We're heading over to Catalina Island. I'm on motion sickness medication, so I'm not 100% here. Just so everybody knows. You know me, still the same old G. <laughs> Throughout this video, you're gonna see a little title that kind of comes up on the bottom of what we're shooting on. And so right now, this is the A6400. Well, the problem is we don't have an ND for this, so yeah. everything's gonna be stopped down, and the shutter speed's gonna be really high. So they'll probably see that difference more than the actual differences in the camera. 
Hey Becky, how motion sick are you right now? On a scale from one to the helicopter the other day, I'm like probably a six. We can see that Becky is quite motion sick here. A whale! We have a full frame lens at 16 millimeters, a crop body at 10 millimeters. They should be roughly similar fields of view. We'll be swapping back and forth. Both of them are the same f-stop, f4. Uh, the ISOs are a bit different, the shutter speeds are a bit different because we don't have an ND for this camera. But you should get an idea, you know, for all intents and purposes, this should be the, a similar shot. The background's a little bit out of focus with the full frame more than at the crop body. Uh, but the field of view should roughly be similar. Oh, what's up guys? Yo. We're almost here. Looks a little bit like Hawaii to me. Yeah, you know, like the green kind of gumdrop style mountains right on the water. Boat! We're a bunch of YouTube influencers on a boat, yo! to Catalina Island. So we're gonna show you guys some comparisons between the full frame and the crop body. Now let us know in the comments what you guys think, if you think uh, which one looks better, which one you prefer. Can't wait to ride a golf cart. Oh, hey guys. Hey. What's up? I just wanna drive a golf cart, that's fun. Have you ever flipped a golf cart over before? Yeah. Hang out with Becky and Chris. Hang out in the back seat, we're having a party. Little party. I just full, tagged along, honestly. Full frame versus crop body. Is that Check what your video's gonna be? Initially the plan was to go on this aerial adventure where we climbed up on tree canopies, but we wanted to shoot this video and we're, we started off a little bit late. So I think we're only gonna have time just to zip around this island on golf carts, which is okay with me because that sounds fantastic. Also, last time I drove a golf cart, I flipped it over. Now you're telling us? Oh my gosh, tell us the story, please. I was, I was young and we were we were actually golfing and I felt like we should do like golf polo where one leans out the side of the cart and tries to hit the ball. That is awesome. And I missed so I was like turn it around so he like I go flying out the side of the golf cart he flips it over. Anyway it was we could have gotten really hurt now that I think about Don't it. Don't do that for us today. <laughs> Inertia got the best of you buddy. Yeah I know. First lesson in physics. Let's floor it! Whoa, oh my gosh! Okay we're good. We're okay. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. This thing doesn't accelerate very fast. <laughs> So we've just arrived by golf cart on this nice scenic road on Catalina Island. Right now we're filming with the A7S II and the A6400. The A7S II obviously is a full frame mirrorless camera and the A6400 is a crop body mirrorless camera. Both of these cameras right now are shooting at a similar field of view, no, millimeters. No, the A7S II was in the frame of this. <laughs> so the A7S II right now is shooting at 16 millimeters. The A6400, which is the crop body, is shooting at 10 millimeters which is equivalent to a 15 millimeter lens on a full frame. So roughly 15 millimeters versus 16 millimeters. For all intents and purposes, it's the same field of view, but a different focal length. So they're both shooting at F4. You may notice the background's a little bit blurrier with the full frame uh, versus with the crop body. It has more depth of field and therefore things are, more things are gonna be in focus. Let's wait for the golf cart to pass. So I think what we're gonna do next here now is a little B-roll challenge. So we're gonna go tandem back and forth full frame versus crop body, full frame, crop body. And the settings are gonna be more or less the same, similar f-stop, but a different uh, focal length so that the field of views are roughly similar. You can kind of see the different feels of each camera. Okay, let's do that. millimeters on a crop sensor but when we switch to full frame to get the same field of view that we had on the crop body you're either going to move closer to your subject or you're gonna zoom in guys your back seat is a little bit messier than our front seat uh, <laughs> I, I would say you know what no I would say just a lot of collaboration here so my name is Cindy Youngson uh, so I do a lot of storytelling camera gear, vlog stuff on my channel, and uh, I also do a lot of dancing. <laughs> really? <laughs> no okay. shame. What's up fam? My name's Kitty. I do a lot of camera gear reviews. Mostly gimbals are what people know me for. Gimbal girl. Gimbal queen is what people have been calling me. GQ. Like, mm. I love that. And then right. I do some like travel vlogs. I'm trying to get into more like environmental awareness videos this year. And you know what? You look like a bandit because you've got a shadow going right over your eyes right now. Do I look like a bandit? Super stealth. Always. Uh, you don't look like a bandit. I think you look like a bandit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now we're just gonna go shooting. So we're gonna shoot b-roll with this camera We're gonna shoot b-roll with the crop body We're gonna take some pictures with both cameras and then we'll shoot back to the office and we'll talk more about this
All right, we finished our adventure here on Catalina Island. We're gonna go have some food with the Sony crowd. Back to the office. We're back. So if you guys are expecting a full Sony a6400 review on this channel, you will not get it. We are talking about crop versus full frame. So we'll link to a few below. We pulled the Pixel and Lines Facebook group and asked them if they had any questions about APS-C versus full frame. If you aren't a part of our Facebook group yet and you wanna join, we'll leave the link in the description box. Basically a community that we've created for people who are into photography and video, who wanna learn more, ask questions, and kinda of just be involved with the community. And by the way, when we talk, when we say crop, or we say APS-C, we mean the same thing. We're using those two terms interchangeably. First question is, is there any difference between APS-C and full frame? What's the benefit of having a bigger sensor? There's a few main reasons why. The first one is that if you're more zoomed out, you have to either physically get closer to your subject, or you have to zoom in. And doing both of those actions will actually make your depth of field appear shallower. So when you walk closer to your subject, you're gonna focus closer and it's gonna throw everything out in the background and more out of focus. And a lot of times people associate that with more expensive or better looking photos. So that's one benefit there. Zooming in will actually narrow your depth of field. So you're gonna get what's called lens compression and your background is gonna appear larger in your frame than it would if you just move closer to your subject. So if you've ever seen a picture where there's huge moons or huge suns, you're like, what? How did that even, is that Photoshop? Photoshop. You can actually use super long telephoto lenses to compress the image and it makes the background which is the sun or the moon, look huge compared to your subject. A benefit to using a crop body though is if you're shooting something like sports, because you're getting more of a cropped in, zoomed in look, you're actually gonna get more throw with your lens. 200 millimeter lens on a crop body that has a 1.5 times crop factor. In order to get a similar field of view on a full frame, you'd actually have to have a 300 millimeter lens to get that more zoomed in look. So that can actually can be advantageous. And the final difference between an APS-C setup and a full frame setup is that your APS-C setup can be a lot smaller so you don't have to use full frame lenses on your crop body camera since your sensor is smaller you don't need the big image that's projected from a full frame lens you can actually get crop body only lenses that project a smaller image to match the sensor size and your whole kit can be a lot smaller so here's a question i feel like I see come up all the time is when should I invest in a full frame camera? I don't think that the logical step is I want to be a professional photographer, therefore I need to buy a full frame camera. It's personal preference. It's what the camera offers you. If you do want to move forward with a full frame camera, how do you know when you're ready? And I think when you start noticing the limitations of your crop body camera, if you can actually tell the difference between the depth of field and the look that the full frame camera gives you and you prefer that look, then it's time to move forward with a full frame camera. And I remember when we upgraded to full frame, you were still using a crop body. I bought a Canon 5D Mark II. You borrowed that for a portrait shoot. You came back and you were like, oh my God, it's night and day. I can never go back. It was a different perspective. The lenses yeah. look different. The depth of field looked different. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with APS-C. It's just for my personal shooting style and the things that I was trying to shoot, I, that's the look I wanted. Every time you jump up in sensor size, you kind of get that, aha. Again, where do you draw the line? When is the camera too big, too expensive? And that just depends on what you're shooting, what your budget is, and what you prefer. So the next question is, can you compensate a cropped sensor with a wide lens? And yes, you can. You've seen it earlier in this video where we had a 10 to 18 millimeter lens on the a6400, which is a crop body. And then we have the 16 to 35 on the full frame. Once you consider the crop factor, just get a wider lens and you're basically good to go. The thing to also consider though in this comparison is that most of our shots were very, very wide and you may not see as much of the difference when it's ultra wide because essentially at 16 millimeters, most everything's gonna be in focus anyway. You may see a slight difference in the size of the background objects. At 16 millimeters, the difference is not a ton. But we did do a comparison with a 24 millimeter lens on the crop body and then we put the same focal length on the full frame but we actually moved closer so the frame was similar just to give you guys an idea of what 24 looks like on a full frame and what it looks like on a crop body. And I'm gonna toss up these two pictures here now. The 24 millimeter on a crop body, you can see the shot is more compressed, so the background looks larger. There's more in focus, and it just kind of looks a little bit flatter, like flatter. Pressed together. Compressed. When we put the 24 millimeter lens on the full frame camera and walked closer so you get the same field of view, Chris was the same size in the image, the background was further away. It was creamier, a little more out of focus, but you're also getting a lot more lens distortion on Chris. So you can see things were a little bit wider and same focal length, but you can really see here the differences between the crop body and the full frame. The next question is full frames are more expensive than crop. Does that mean they're better? Full frames are more expensive because the sensor is bigger and therefore costs more to make. Yeah, lenses have more glass. Everything is just bigger. But if bigger is better for you based on the 
principles that we talked about, then yeah, it might be better. But you know, if you're a sports photographer and you need that extra lens throw, then a crop body might be better. So it all depends on your situation. Does mirrorless add anything to the discussion with sensor size now that it's becoming more popular? Mirrorless doesn't have anything to do with the sensor size per se. All it was referring to is that the pentaprism or pentamir has been removed. DSLRs being digital single lens reflex. Single lens reflex means you look through the viewfinder and you're actually looking out the physical lens. And now they realize, well, what we can do is if you don't need a viewfinder, we can just get rid of that whole assembly, making it mirrorless. And then when you look on the back of the screen, there's always an image being projected on the sensor and you're just seeing a live video of that. So that's what a mirrorless camera is. So you can get mirrorless full frames like the a7S II, which is what we use in this video, as well as the a6400, which is the mirrorless crop body that we borrowed from Sony. Somebody asked, would Becky and Chris be what they are with crop? I don't think your sensor size makes the photographer. Your eye, your knowledge of the camera, your knowledge of editing. I think that this is a recurring theme in a lot of our videos, mm -hmm. is that equipment doesn't matter as much as people think. Oh, you have a nice camera, therefore it takes nice pictures. In their mind, they think, oh, it's 90% equipment, 10% user. When in reality, that ratio is flipped. It's actually more like 90% user, 10% equipment, or even more. It's just knowing your equipment and using your equipment to get where you wanna be. Along with the poll of questions we did with the Pixel and Lens Group, some of the photographers actually shared some of their thoughts too. And so I picked a couple of the ones that I thought were really interesting. First thought is from Jeremy. He says, in my experience, APS-C struggles in low light. And if you plan on cropping images for just a hobbyist, there's nothing wrong with APS-C. I think lens quality is more important than sensor size. I have to agree with that. I think lens quality is much more important than sensor size. I always tell people invest in your lenses because you can upgrade your body down the road. We have lenses that we've had for 10 plus years that are sure, still perfect. Actually. Generally speaking, yeah, larger sensors with the same number of pixels. We'll have larger pixels, they'll be able to catch more photons, you'll have a higher signal noise ratio, so you'll be, have less noisy images. You'd be captioned in photons? Yeah. The second thing from Aries, I feel like it's great to keep both if you have the resources, full frame for depth of field and cropped sensors for range, just my two cents. Personally, I wouldn't keep two bodies on hand. I think it's redundant, unless you needed a backup camera or a second camera. See, I don't agree with that. We have always had two camera bodies that shot video and photos, and since we sold the second angle, I've been needing the second an angle. Or if you're a professional like wedding photographer, you absolutely need a backup body on you at all times. So it depends on the application, I guess. Alex says, we have a full frame for cinema shots and an APS-C for vlogging and travel. Our philosophy is to use the best equipment at our disposal. If we can, we use full frame, but sometimes it's just too big. I think that for travel vlogging, if you're doing all carry-ons and you're run and gun and your bags are with you all the time, then APS-C is probably a better choice. For minimal differences. I feel like we can't end this video without sharing some of our thoughts about the Sony a6400. The crop versus full frame didn't make as much difference as I thought. The issue that's kind of confounding it though is that the autofocus on the a6400 was so much better than the autofocus on the like a7S2. Wor like worlds better. The a7S2 is old. It's like three years old. Yeah. Like if they could put that focus in this camera in the a7S3 if that ever comes out, like yeah. best camera. I don't even give a shit about the flip out screen. Cause I wouldn't even have to worry about it cause you'd be in exactly. focus. Things I didn't like about the camera was you couldn't use the flip up screen and the mic at the same time. I have noticed that there are now custom mounts like low profile mounts. You can mount the microphone on the sides. There are ways around that, um, but the adapter they gave us was pretty clunky. 24 millimeter lens we were playing with was a lot of fun. I think it was a 1.8. They didn't have the customizable wheel on the top of the a6400, which I use all the time. Shoot 4K, you could shoot log gamma, slow motion. I had no problem holding it up and vlogging with it and I struggle with the a7s2 sometimes because I find it heavy. Would you switch from the a7s2 to the 6400? I would have it as a backup camera and I would have it as a compact kit if I was going on a quick trip. Yeah, right. we, don't, all... we don't use a lot of cameras. We don't upgrade our cameras often. We research cameras when we're gonna buy one but then it's like we bought this camera like two and a half years ago mm -hmm. and people are like oh what do you think about this new camera versus like I didn't even Don't know, know. That those existed. Well, thank you so much, Sony, for flying us out. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one. Oh. <laughs> He's jamming. That's the life right there. We're getting run over. <laughs> Sam's running us over. Throwing your shot. Come on, man. Come on. Trying to, trying to film a video here. <laughs> <laughs> Explore it. Look, not all of us know how to fly helicopters, right? <laughs>